What up boys and welcome to my top 5 questions you should be asking at the start of a game in Clash Royale. This video was a suggestion by I Am The Lion that I thought was really cool. So there's a small little shout out for him. With all of that said, if you haven't already then be sure to drop a subscription onto this channel to keep up to date with the latest and greatest Clash Royale content. But apart from that, let's get into it. <laughs> Knowing your opponent's deck sets you up entirely for the rest of the game, seeing as their chosen 8 cards are static and cannot change throughout the match. It should be one of the first questions you're asking when you enter battle. With this information in mind, you can make all kinds of plays that we'll discuss later on in this video. Knowledge of the current meta decks is something I also mentioned in my top 5 pro mistakes video, because not knowing very popular deck lists can get you into a load of trouble. I left some examples in that video itself, so I won't go into too much depth here, but again it's all just about knowing what options your opponent has and how to play around them. There are two ways to recognize a deck list. Of course, you can just wait for them to play 8 cards and keep them in the back of your mind whilst you're playing the game. This method can be sort of difficult, especially if you have a bad memory like me. The other method is to just remember key interactions. If they're running Mini Packer, you don't have to remember all 8 cards to know what they're likely going to play against your Hog Rider. Of course, the easiest way to know your opponent's 8 cards is if they're playing a meta deck where you have already remembered their exact list before the game. This question seems sort of niche, but figuring out whether somebody is a bait strategy early on within a game allows you to figure out their win condition and assign cards to it. Now, a lot of you may just assume I mean log bait when I mention bait strategies, but that is absolutely not the case. My first ever video was actually one on beating all bait strategies, and it outlines how most decks can actually be bait. You may not realize it, but even decks like Golem often employ a bait strategy. All you need to do is figure out what their most dangerous bait cards are, and remember to keep your counters in hand for them. And this is why it's important to figure out bait strategies at the start of a game. If you throw away your best counter card and they punish you with their bait card, you're in for a world of hurt just because you are too eager with this one card. With this being said, you also need to figure out efficient responses to their other bait cards too. All of this is made easier if you follow point number one and know every meta deck, but being able to figure it out within a game is also made a lot easier when this question is at the front of your mind from the start of every game. In every game you play, your win condition will have some sort of counter. This counter could be something as black and white as Rocket vs Sparky, or it could be something more flexible like Minions vs Hog Rider. Figuring out what your opponent is trying to reliably use against your win condition can allow you to appropriately respond to allow yourself more damage. Asking yourself what your opponent's counter is at the start of the game enables you to do this for the entire match, opposed to figuring out later for less damage. There are two methods of this, which I'll explain now. You can either bolster your push, or you can make a predictive play. Bolstering your push is adding cards to your push that can disrupt your opponent's defensive plan. Take Krog Rider vs Minions as the example from earlier. Bolstering your push with an Ice Golem means that these minions become zappable, and you've countered the counter. Bolstering is essentially adding something to the push before it crosses the river, whereas a prediction mostly happens after your push crosses the river. If we take the same Hog vs Minions example again, you can use a prediction here to throw a fireball or some arrows to catch those minions before they can even affect your Hog. Once again, you've countered the counter just by reading what your opponent is wanting to do. Now, the opposite question to the previous one is, what is their win condition and how do I counter it? It's pretty similar to both of the last two points, in fact. You want to know their win condition from the start of the game in order to continue countering it with your most efficient card. Keeping this in hand to counter their win con means it can get minimal damage every single time they use it, and allow you an advantage within a game. Again, knowing meta decks will help you here, because if you see a Musketeer and Skeleton cycled in the back, you probably want to keep your Tornado for Hog Riders. We can elaborate further on this by adding in our previous theory of bolstering and predicting. With their win condition in mind, always actively be thinking of how they might try to counter your counter with these methods. If your opponent is attempting to bolster their push, try to switch up which units you use to counter with if possible. If not, just try to switch up the placements of where you defend. These two things will mean that any tricks your opponent tries will be less effective and enable you more time to react. In terms of predicting, just try to delay some placement if you think they're going to throw a prediction spell. Having them miss is well worth it, even if it means waiting a few seconds to defend and conceding a little bit of damage. Yeah. 
Investing or punishing is something I find myself talking about a lot on this channel. I recently went over it again in that top 5 mistakes video, but also dedicated an entire win condition video to it, so I'm going to make this point short and sweet. If your win condition is considerably more expensive than your opponent, you want to be placing it in the back and building around it. If your win condition is considerably less expensive than your opponent, wait for them to invest in the back and attempt to punish at the river. Having this game plan from the get-go enables you to have the tactical heads up on your opponent if you figure it out first. It will also stop you wasting time in a game which is crucial if you have a bad matchup or are simply a chip cycle deck. Pretty much all of these tips are just yelling time efficiency, but that is a critical part to Clash Royale and sort of the underlying theme of this list. Anyway boys, that's all I got for my top 5 questions to be asking at the start of a Clash Royale game. If you did enjoy today's video, then be sure to drop a subscription and whatnot, but apart from that, peace.